Hello and welcome to 101 Ideas for Minecraft Learners. In this episode, we're going to be looking at 3D printing and we'll be using a, a program called Mindways, uh, which is completely free, uh, and we're going to use that program to sort of scoop out your Minecraft builds from whatever world you've created them in and send them to uh, Shapeways, which is a commercial 3D printer. And we're going to be uh, looking at an example which is going to be using something called uh, coloured sandstone. So that's a kind of a, a process uh, where the 3D printer uses uh, um, kind of different small little particles of, of uh, like almost like sand, but each one is coloured and it puts them together and you can create amazing 3D builds uh, that look really, really incredible. Uh, but first of all, uh, let me introduce you to, if you're unfamiliar with where, where we are, we're actually uh, using something called Minecraft EDU, which is the educational version of Minecraft. Um, and uh, it works really well and it's used in schools around the world. Uh, and I wanted to just uh, show uh, everybody that it's possible to take Minecraft worlds uh, that are made, you know, from Minecraft EDU and use them as a 3D printing platform. So you can kind of use this in your schools uh, and classrooms uh, if, if you're a teacher using Minecraft EDU. Uh, so let's turn myself around. I want to show you this uh, lovely flat world. Now, I, I use flat worlds to do a lot of building and so does Django. And these are two examples from my son's uh, bit work that he's done. We, we made these, we made this world on Christmas Day. So it's actually called, the world is called Christmas Day. Uh, and he made, I don't know if people recognize this, it's a UK uh, cartoon called the Octonauts. And this is called, this is the Octopod, which is amazing. So he made that. And also he made... Um, this figure over here, and this figure is, uh, a, a, is a representation of Paul Sauls Jr.'s um, unturned uh, character. He plays, uh, there's a, a game he plays called Unturned, and you go around um, and basically hunt down zombies. So he's got a little gun there, and he's got a little kind of a baseball bat, I think, as well. Uh, and uh, well, Django made this because he's a huge fan of Paul Sauls Jr., uh, and he wanted to kind of make a, a 3D print from it as well. So we, I said, okay, make something in Minecraft, and I'll print it out for you, and that can be a kind of a, a post-Christmas present for you. Uh, so that's what he did. So we, he kind of made it all from lovely colored blocks, and it looks amazing. So we just made it on there, and we made it flat on the ground, uh, and it's easier for me to kind of scoop things out because it'll be nice and stable on the floor too. But you can make anything you like. Um, when we 3D print things out, we obviously won't be printing them out. Uh, they won't be transparent, like this glass here won't, won't actually turn uh, into glass. It'll be maybe a white or something like that. So do consider those things when you're printing stuff out. Do have a look at um, some of the forums as well, and we're going to show you where to download all this stuff from too. So this is just to show people that um, it uh, it is possible to make stuff in Minecraft EDU and then use the map uh, that used on the server uh, to to you know use the mind ways to uh, s export the 3D objects that your students have built within uh, within Minecraft. So here we go. That's that's that bit. That's the easy part. If you like building in Minecraft is lovely. You know, go into creative mode and um, build whatever you like. Okay, build a house, uh, maybe um, do some projects, do some Roman stuff. I think what we're going to be doing in the future is we're going to be doing some uh, Viking ships and other bits and um, projects like that. So that's what we're going to be doing with Django. It's going to be quite amazing. So once you've done that, once you've built your objects, and that's the kind of the easy part, the bit that we all know about, let's get on to the more complicated part, download Mineways and uh, fire that up. And I'll show you how to scoop out this model and send it to Shapeways so you can 3D print it out. If you're not sure about where your Minecraft map is, um, you can, and, but you've got access to your Minecraft EDU launcher, you can always generally uh, go to the Start Minecraft EDU Server Launcher, click on that, uh, and you often do this if you're starting the server up for the first time. If your server's continually running, you need to talk to the technician, and they're going to help you find the World Save folder. Uh, if you need them to show this video, this is a good way of doing it. Uh, when you do, when you start up the Minecraft EDU server launcher, you get something that look, looks like this. We're going to select a saved world because uh, we're looking for that Christmas Day world that me and Janka created, and we can see that there it is. Normally, you, to start that world, you would select it and then press Start. But we can also go up to Settings and we can browse the folder that they're actually in. This shows you actually where the folders are kept. So there's the Christmas Day world, uh, 
and we can open it up and we can see that we've got a dat file, a dim file, and we've got all the other bits and the level dat stuff and all that kind of player data and stuff. That's all the juicy stuff that we're going to need to, to use uh, to export our 3D objects. And there it is, and we can kind of see down here we've got users, Adam Clark, library, it's having application support, it's in Minecraft EDU, it's in server tool, it's in worlds and saved worlds, and it's called Christmas Day. We're going to need to not necessarily remember that, but be aware of that later on when we're looking for that world ourselves. So let's go and have a look at Mineways, and uh, we can download Mineways, and you can have a go at launching it, and uh, we'll explore how that works. So you can download Mineways from realtimerendering.com and uh, I'll give the link in the description below. Uh, here we go, uh, Mineways is a free open source program for exporting Minecraft models. We can see different examples of it which is amazing. Uh, and you can see here we've got little yellow dots on the side here and that represents the torches on the side of the, uh, of the model there. So it looks pretty amazing and this is delivered from Shapeways uh, but there are of course a variety of different uh, uh, commercial uh, enterprises that will print think 3d things out for you so do shop around uh, you know we're not you know we don't endorse anybody I just use Shapeways because yeah I always have and you know it's the one I've chosen uh, but you can choose anyone you like really so there's my nose we've got downloads we've got support and we've got community do have a look around this website it's got loads of interesting stuff it's got some documentation it's got troubleshoot shooting it's got how to run a Mac or PC uh, I'm using a Mac so this is the the Mac version uh, but it's not too it's probably actually easier on a PC version to be honest with you and we've also got a gallery as well and you can kind of see all the amazing things that people have built and there are tons and tons of lovely stuff look at this stuff so this is all printed using generally um, the that uh, that's colored sandstone technique okay colored sandstone does look amazing and it uh, it takes the kind of the texture file from minecraft and it uses that uh, to color in your 3d prints and it looks stunning 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 stuff look at all that amazing uh, so let's fire up my ways and i'll show you how to get started so the first time I start up Mineways, I get this little dialog box saying it couldn't find my Minecraft World Saves file directory. You'll need to guide Mineways there to save it to you. And that's basically because I think I'm on a Mac and it's looking for a C folder and stuff like this. Don't worry, uh, you know, it, uh, it, it does give you a kind of a little bit of information about where to find this stuff. Uh, and it says if you're still stuck, go to visitmineways.com. So and it's, it's constantly trying to help us uh, figure out how to use this, this bit of software. So I'm going to press OK. And then we get our dialog box, our kind of these, this is the application, this is what it looks like. Um, and uh, on the Mac it's using a wine, uh, a, a, a kind of way of emulating a PC. So, you know, it looks a little bit different and it looks a little bit unusual, but don't worry, it's pretty cool as it is. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to need to find that uh, world save folder that we, um, that we made uh, it, either in vanilla Minecraft, or you can actually just find out uh, a little bit about it in... Um, you know, your technicians have found you, your folder for you, maybe put it onto a memory stick or something like that, giving it to you. So it's on your desktop. So the first thing is we need to find it. I need to go to File, Open World, and Custom World. And if I remember where it was, it was in that, uh, it was in Library, uh, Application Support, and it was in Minecraft EDU, which is there, and server tool, and worlds, saved worlds, and there it is, Christmas Day. So I'm going to open that, and what I need to open is the level.dat file, okay? So I can just press open, and there is the world that we were looking at just a moment ago, and we're looking at it now from a top-down view. Uh, so I can left-click and move around that world, I can then use my mouse roller button on the back to zoom in and zoom out and that is the the thing that we're going to need to look at. So this is Django's model of that Paul Sauls Jr. Uh, object that he made. So I'm going to right click and draw a square around the outside. As soon as I've done that and let go, it gives us another informational dialog box. It says all blocks in your selection are below the current lower depth of 62. When you select, you're selecting in three dimensions, and there is a lower depth displayed in the status bar at the bottom. And this is because it's, this is a flat world, so it's actually um, 
below the kind of the the level that I've got it at. Uh, so you can adjust the depth by using the lower slider or the and keys, and the depth will be reset to to three to include all visible blocks. Okay, cool. So I could do three or kind of uh, maximum height. So this is the height of our world, um, and sometimes obviously you don't want to um, create. You, know, you don't want to kind of capture all the way down to bedrock all the way up to the top of the sky but because we used a flat world that's very low on the floor that's why it's doing that so I'm just going to show you a little picture to demonstrate uh, the the height of a Minecraft map from bedrock all the way up to the sky or that top area and uh, we can kind of see from this image uh, you know what the maximum height is and what the lower depth is and you'll be capturing using these sliders on the Mineways application uh, where you want to kind of capture yourself in three dimensions. So we're looking from above, uh, but we're also kind of, you know, taking a slice of cake out of that world. Uh, in this particular world here that we've got with the, the Django made called Christmas Day, uh, we've got bedrock, which is at level one, and then we've got kind of uh, maybe three layers of grass, and then we've got our model. So we, we made this very, very low on the ground. So that's what we need to do there. We've made our selection. The next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to make sure that the terrain file uh, that you're actually got using is actually connected to this. And that means that when we export it, um, we, uh, we it will export all the color information uh, from the Minecraft world too. Uh, let's show you the error message you get if you don't do that. So I'm going to export for 3D printing. So I'll go up to File, down to Export for 3D printing. Uh, let's save it on my desktop. Uh, Adam Clark desktop, and we'll do it as um, build one. Save it like that, and we get kind of a dialog box. And I'm not gonna I'm gonna go through this dialog box again. But if I just press OK, we get an error file, an error message, and it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it happens, especially on a Mac, for example. It says, there's no terrain XPNG file found. Please put the terrain XPNG file in the same directory as the Mineways EXE. Well, it is, but it's just kind of lost it because uh, we're using, it's emulating a PC. Mac users, select the menu item file, set to terrain file, and choose the terrain EXE PNG file in downloads, blah, blah, blah. So that's what we're going to need to do first. So I'm going to say OK and go up to file again and set the terrain file. So the terrain exe png, which is all the color data of all the blocks in the world. So where is it? it well, it's wherever you've downloaded uh, Mineways to. Now I've, I've downloaded mine to my documents, uh, which is in my documents file and I've got in Adam Clark and there it is Mineways Mac. Open that up and it should be terrain exe png, there it is open that and that's that bit done okay so now it's connected all that color data uh, to, to the map so when we go to file and export for 3d printing save it as that I'm gonna save it as whatever we want to call it it's called a, a type of file shapeways now we've got a drop-down menu here we could save it as lots of different things um, a Sculptio which is a uh, Sculptio is a, another kind of uh, um, uh, commercial 3d printer uh, way from OBJ, way from it's, a, it's just a, a, um, a file type, a 3D file type, which is really useful, and you can kind of do some interesting stuff with that. iMaterialize is another company that you can use. We can also use an STL file, an STL files. That's what I use when I do my own 3D printing with my own 3D printer in a kind of in plastic. Uh, and, uh, there's two types of uh, STL files here. I generally use ASCII or what we're going to do today is the very bottom one, which is the Shapeways file, and um, we're going to save that there. Okay, and now we get this model export dialog box. So we've got world coordinates, blah, blah, blah. I would, most of this top stuff, do read it. Uh, we want to create a zip file containing all the exported model files. That's useful because uh, we can just upload that zip folder. Uh, and it's just really handy, <laughs> so we're going to do that as well. Also, create files themselves. We can do that just so you can kind of uh, make sure that they're you know, all safe in there. Most of these things will be ticked for you as as, as kind of expecting uh, what you what you want to do. Um, and then we can go down to scale. Now, we could have got different kind of options with scale. 
We've made the model five centimeters high, minimize the size based on the wall thickness of type of material, uh, make each block two millimeters high, aim for a cost of $25. Now remember we talked about when you print things out, um, commercial printers use volume. So the more volume it has, uh, the higher its cost will be. Uh, also, when we um, we want to just make sure the units, model's units are in millimetres and the physical material is going to be coloured sandstone. I'm going to make my, my model, um, I think I'm going to make it six centimetres high. It needs to be reasonably big, uh, otherwise it might not print very well when we take it to Shapeways. You can experiment with it and Shapeways will feed you back information about uh, whether the walls are too thin or other bits and pieces like that. Sometimes it, it kind of it doesn't really like thin, really thin models. Uh, so that's why uh, I'm going to be trying to make this a bit bigger. So make the model about six centimeters in height. Then we've got some more bits and pieces down here. Fill air bubble, seal off entrances, etc, etc. I'm going to leave them all as default and I'm going to press OK. It then gives us, it saved that to my desktop and it's given us some uh, 3D printing statistics. Uh, it's given us an estimated cost of about $31, which is not too bad. Uh, it says the base is uh, 34 by 31 blocks. It's 23 blocks high. Each block is 2.6 millimeters high, which is pretty good. Uh, it gives us our inches, etc., etc., and total our number of blocks. Do you want to have the statistics continue to be displayed with each export for this session? Yeah, why not? Okay, you might want that if you're doing a whole classrooms of uh, printing. Uh, now, what we've got is we've got rather a large base over here, so you might think actually that's a bit too big. I'm gonna I want to reduce the size of the base here. So, the way to do that and the way to reshape um, your area of printing is you can right click and grab a corner, a kind of a, an edge, and you can kind of resize your edges and bring them back in like this. So resize them, bring it back so it's a little bit smaller, go back up to file, uh, export for 3D printing, and I'm going to just do that as build 2. Save again, it remembers the last thing you've made, make the model 6 centimeters high, press OK, and again we've got, our, we've got a little bit less uh, printing cost, it's $23 now which is fantastic, and I can press yes, that's fine. So that's save these uh, files onto the desktop, and let's have a look at those files and see what they look like. So let's have a look at the files now. We've got uh, these files up here and they look like, so that's all the textures that we've got. Uh, that's the kind of the 3D file itself, build2 and at dot .wrl. And we've got the zip file with all those, all, uh, both of these two objects, these kind of the picture and the 3D file, all zipped together into a zip file, which is going to be useful when we want to upload it to Shapeways. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to shapeways.com or use another commercial printer. Uh, log yourself in, make an account, and uh, in Shapeways go to Design, and uh, I've clicked Design here, uh, and I can see the models that I've already got. Uh, they've, we've got an Upload button, Design a Project, Get Started, etc, etc. We're going to go straight to Upload, and we should get a little dialog window like this. I'm going to select the file that we want. And of course, I'm going to need that zipped file, which has got this, both the objects in, um, and I'm going to select that, so I'm going to press Open. Uh, you can see the path there. Uh, remember the model units is in millimeters and we exported it as millimeters so that will make sense there. You can also do it in inches and meters. If you do it in inches and meters you will get something ginormous <laughs> or, or, or a different size than you're expecting. So do make sure make sure that the millimeters um, reflects the, the export that you did within Mineways. And then I'm going to press upload. It shouldn't take that long to upload this stuff because they are quite small. Um, so please wait your, while your model is being uploaded. And there we go. So Shapeways has uploaded the model and it's actually producing a little thumbnail view of our model in the right hand side over here. We've got some descriptions, some size, some part counts because you, you know you could in, with 3D printing like this you can print multiple objects all in different parts so they can be separate with each other. And there it is, there's our 3D model, there it is. We can see all the way around our little chap there and um, it looks pretty good, it looks pretty good, amazing. There are lots of different materials that you can print in. There's strong and flexible plastic, there's even metallic plastic, there's detailed acrylic, which is amazing, there's stainless steel, even precious metals, and of course our colored sandstone. And there we have, 
full colored sandstone and it has passed the automatic checks. So we can actually go into view 3D tools and we can see the price as well, which is not too bad. And uh, in 3D pr tools, we can discover how your 3D model is automatically and manually checked at Shapeways, open checks and learn potential problems that may affect the 3D printing of your product. Uh, when you buy the product, all checks are subject to review by our Shapeways 3D print engineer. So it tells you a little bit about the look and feel. It also tells you about uh, handling and care. The material is not watertight, it's not food safe, it's not recyclable, and it's not dishwasher safe. Um, but that, that may change with other bits and pieces. And we can have a quick look around our model to kind of just visually check uh, different sections of it at the same time. Looks pretty good to me. And what the clipping tool does. Oh, there we go. We've got kind of, we can actually shrink things down and clip it in there. So you've got even more. Uh, tools to be able to, to, be able to kind of uh, change the way your print may be produced. We can see that it's uh, currently at €24.68, Euros, uh, 68, uh, which is amazing. So you, if you want to do that, you could just go to the Buy Now and buy it for yourself. We did do this earlier on this year, and it takes about four weeks to, to actually produce. And I'm going to show you a, p a couple of images of us uh, with our final print of this thing, so you can see for yourself what it looks like. I hope this has been useful and uh, if you have any questions do leave them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. Until next time, thanks very much. Bye bye. Bye.